I'd like to remind everybody that this is a recorded meeting. Uh, Mr. Rector, will you call the roll? Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Cash is not here. Gordon Cunningham is not here. Terry McCulley? Here. Uh, Damon Jackson? Is here. <laughs> <He's laughs> <made it. laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm here. All right. David Remy? Here. Drew Kraft is not here. Brooke Tharp? Here. Okay. We have four, so you can, we have a quorum, we'll call the meeting to order. We need to have a reading of the minutes or a motion to dispense and approve. And you probably have to talk louder for them. I'm sorry. Did y'all hear me? I move to read the minutes. To read the minutes or dispense? Dispense and approve. I'm sorry. <laughs> I second. So I'm going to have to go get them if they want. <laughs> <That's going on. laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second to uh, approve or dispense the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, looks like we don't have any class one permits. So, Kevin, can you go over the new class two through 10 or any territory expansion since last meeting? Sure. Um, we've got uh, three new permit applications and one territory expansion. Um, DT Custom Fabrication, they got their Class 2, they're out of Greenwood. Central State Bus Sales got their Class 7, uh, they're in North Little Rock. And NRG Dynamics is a new uh, um, transporter, they're a Class 5 out of Tucson, Arizona. Those were the three applications that we've been approved since the last time we met. And then uh, Budget LP um, under Territory Expansion uh, just uh, acquired Calhoun County. So those are the those are the uh, um, permits and expansions since last time you all met. Yeah, we, if you'd like, we can get. Uh, and he is he's already in. We'll just. Uh, Glenn, can you unmute? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Okay. We can. Can you hear us okay? Yes. Okay, very good. So um, if you look on your agendas, and, and if you all remember, um, it was a few meetings ago that it was brought to our attention that uh, we had not been following statute properly and that um, board employees were issuing um, exceptions when the statute looked appears to be explicit that that is in the hands of the board. So this was one of the one of these situations, and so this this has to do with the uh, Jefferson Regional, uh, a, a new facility. Um, Glenn, is this a brand new facility or is this an addition? It is brand new, ground up. All right. So this is a a, a new facility that's um, down in Whitehall, and it involves a couple of 500 gallon tanks that's feeding a vaporizer. They're also going to locate a generator, and uh, if you get if you got your packets, if you'll look um, if you'll look at that first uh, uh, page, or if you can see it on your screen, um, <clears throat> you can see the vaporizer inside the wall with the 500 gallon tanks, and then you'll see a a raised pad just beyond those 500 gallon tanks. And they are going to locate a generator. And, and Glenn, what size of a diesel tank is this going to have on it? Uh, I knew you would ask that, and I should have been prepared. It is forty two hundred. I, I I thought. Give me I a thought second. That, I can look it up. I'm sorry, I don't know that. I'll talk to Ted. For some reason, I thought it was two hundred gallon. That sounds right. It's, um, it's big. Yeah, and and so you know our our distance requirements. You have to be fifteen feet. Uh, from uh, um, connection point on the tank or the filler valve from the vaporizer, but you also have to be 20 feet, is it 20 or 25 guys? 20. 20 feet from any other flammable liquid. And so if they put the generator there, then they can't put the storage there. And, uh, and so, well, fantastic. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <Forced him. laughs> updating. the laptop is updating, so we can just forget that for a while. All right. Um, so I hope you all do have your 
<laughs> your PDF that I sent you. Um, but uh, uh, if you can see that that wall there that houses all of the generator and the vaporizer and the storage tanks, that is a, a two hour firewall that they've built around that. And, um, and so I went down and looked at this and, and then I've got an overhead shot, if you've got that available and it, it shows where this is gonna be located. Um, and they, uh, Glenn and the guys down there, they sent in three different options for us to look at. And after considering these and seeing them and going down there, both the one, the first option and the second option has the 500 gallon tank still remaining inside the wall. And so if there's, you know, my, uh, um, my concern, if there was any kind of unintended release at all, those two walls is gonna trap that product low to the ground. That vaporizer has got a freestanding pilot um, and it would just not be a, a good situation. However, the, the, the third solution that they offered was to move the 500 gallon tanks outside that two hour firewall and punch through it to connect back to the vaporizer. Um, they've got enough distance between the 500 gallon tanks and the other part of the building. Um, and that looked like a good solution to me. They would still need a distance exception because the tanks could be, uh, you know, as close as maybe five feet to the vaporizer, but it's on the other side of the wall. Uh, and so that, that seemed like a, a, a good solution to me, but this is this is for you all to discuss and and then um glenn please help if uh what what you guys feeling is and um and if i've missed if i've misrepresented anything you know i, I think you said it exactly right <clears throat> i did find it's a 4200 gallon diesel yeah. tank well it's a 4200 4, gallon diesel yeah. tank so it's it's a big big tank it's much bigger and and yeah we would obviously choose option number one first if we had a, a, a choice in the matter, just because it screens, you know, from visibility to the patients. And that's what the hospital hospital would like as well. But we obviously are, understand where you guys are coming from. And so option three, you know, is somewhat of a best of both worlds in that it provides that barrier. Um, and then we would just need to come up with some some sort of screening outside of that wall. So the patients don't, don't see a propane tank. Yeah. Some kind uh, of aesthetic. That's deal. right. They're talking about putting some holly bushes or some sort of landscape screens. That's it. Well, and Glenn, you know, one of, we talked about the concerns when I was down there, but, um, you know, anytime that there's a transfer of liquid, that that's when the potential for bad things to happen happens. You've got, uh, um, you're delivering it through a hose, which is the, the weak point of the system. Um, it has to, you know, continually be examined and make sure that it's in good shape. And then if, uh, if we had any situation where the filler valve got hung open, um, the driver couldn't get off the tank, it would be a, a much safer situation for those tanks outside the wall in those examples than, than inside. But, Mr. Chair, I'm going to turn it back over to you and you can discuss with your with the members what what you'll want to do here. What do y'all think? Damon? Well, it seems that having the tanks outside the wall would probably be the safer um, unless y'all think it could be done inside that wall. And if you put some outside the wall, so it's just a matter of, of, of screening the tanks with some kind of shrubbery or what, what he discussed earlier. That's what I was thinking. They're sitting outside the wall a lot safer. And like I said, they can put shrubs or lattice work, anything to hide them. Them tanks no different than a homeowner. Yeah. This is David. I've never seen a, a a design of that type to be inside that type of a wall with propane. Um, I certainly would prefer it to be outside the wall. Uh, one question I did have regarding the interior of that is the is that open to in the top of it? Is it open? Yes, it is. Yes, it's a twelve foot uh, cinder block wall that's filled with concrete. Is it? Is it is the cinder block wall 
Is all four sides covered? Uh, it's it's a three sided. It's like more of a C shape. Okay, more of a C shape. Okay, so you've got one side that is open to the to the outside. I guess, I guess it's more of an L. Sorry, the the yeah, yeah. The left side and the top side of the screen is open to the building. That's that's where it faces the building. But that L on the screen, that black, I guess you can't see the screen quite yet, but um, it, it would have a 12 foot wall separating where the vaporizer is from where the um, tanks would be proposed. 12 foot tall, um, it's about 75 to 100 feet in total length. Okay. Well, I still think it would be best for them to be outside. And that wall, um, Glenn, that does have some type of uh, fire rating. It does, yeah. It, it would be a it'd be considered a two hour fire rating fire rated wall. Yeah, I, I don't know if uh, you all if it's popped back up for you guys yet. <clears throat> There it is. Yeah, okay, so uh, this is the L right here. It's open right here, and it's open. It's open on this far end too, isn't it, Glenn? Down? It, yes, on the north end and on the, the south, uh, yeah. west side. Mm -hmm. So this and L, next, of course, it's page, all open on the top. Yeah, the next page kind of shows it in plan view um, where, that, where that L is. Um, yeah, if you can zoom in on where that white portion is on the I don't know if you can zoom in there but that shows the where the generator is and where the tanks would be I'm using PowerPoint viewer so I uh, okay you may have to zoom. Never mind. Mm -hmm. um seems what, a little tight it seemed the the it looks rather narrow and tight for those tanks to be inside that well and this is not drawn the scale I was just showing the location of it Glenn, what is the distance, if we put the tanks outside, what would be the distance from the tank to this building um, adjacent to it? To the building to the right of it? To the on right. The, the, yeah, it's more than 20 feet. Yeah, it, you know, I, I probably should have drawn this a little smaller or more narrow, but it's about 20 feet from here, you know, over to here. So, so this, this is eight. Go ahead. Was somebody going to talk? Yeah, this is Damon. What um, what was the purpose for the two-hour firewall? It's just to screen all of the mechanical equipment. So the generators there. There's some electrical quick connects. There's the propane tanks, just to kind of screen it from view. Um, but then also to provide the fire rating should anything happen. I guess some sort of separation. Yeah, I don't think the intent was ever that it was designed for a firewall. It's just that that component of block with brick on the face with concrete in, in the fill um, creates a two-hour wall per architectural codes. Okay, so it, it wasn't built for a blevy or some catastrophic failure of the propane tank. It was built for to hide stuff. Correct. Okay. Because I was thinking if you built that wall for fire protection and then you set the tanks outside the wall, you know, it's not working. But but it's not there to protect the hospital from a fire at the tanks. No, it's really for visibility to, to okay. hide seal some okay. of the, that equipment. Okay. Well, then I definitely say we should set those tanks outside that wall then. There's no other discussion. Then you probably need to put it in the finished motion. Um, Someone would like to make a motion to approve the waiver based on them sitting outside. Anyone got any more questions? Brooke, Megan? No, I don't have any questions. Uh, it's very clear. I think uh, I, I'll make the motion to approve uh, and move forward with the circumstance that they set the propane tanks outside the wall. Have that level of separation. Distance. 
Need a second. We'll have a second that, David. We have a motion second to grant the distance waiver with the tank sitting outside the retaining wall. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. All right, Glenn, have you got any other questions or anything for us? Uh, the only other request I would I would ask just to make the whole board note um, is we talked about it on site, but a letter from you guys kind of giving direction in this way would go a long way for us. Sure. Um, Y'all see any issue with that? No, 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 no. We can we can provide you the um, the decision and the waiver uh, based on the discussion today, and then you can you can have that to use uh, with your client. Okay, and and we'll move forward with the construction of that pad, and and I'll, I'll take your guys' word for it that that letter is coming, but we're not going to wait for the letter to to proceed. Okay. No, we'll get it out pretty quick. Okay. Just Thank guys for letting me join in. I appreciate your quick response here. Not a problem. Appreciate you guys. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Are there any other matters to come before the board? I think uh, we've got we've got Donnie Ray here. We've got Steve Aarons with the association. Uh, why don't you come in? And, and Steve, if you want, go ahead and pull this chair Pull it around to the end down there and sit beside him. I don't want to mess Keisha's. This is Donnie's show. Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate you letting us come and uh, give you a little update. I mostly will just talk about the safety meeting, our upcoming safety meeting, uncontrolled release of propane. That's kind of timely considering what you just talked about. <laughs> But I think it'll be a really good uh, topic for us to talk about. We've added, uh, so we're going to start 1st of April on Monday uh, in El Dorado. And then uh, last year we went from El Dorado to McGee. And this year we're doing that at Monticello. So we moved that one from McGee to Monticello. And then, uh, and then the rest of them are kind of the same, except we added Batesville. We added baseball on April the 24th. Um, we had a lot of people at Heber Springs and a lot of people in Jonesboro. And some of those folks will go to baseball. So uh, we, we did that to uh, try to lighten our load on those other two nights. And then the other thing is um, our meeting in, we've got uh, April the 29th for Fort Smith. Last year we did that meeting in Van Buren at the Western Sizzling in Van Buren. I believe it's closed. So we scheduled at the Western Sizzling uh, over in Fort Smith on Towson Avenue. And originally we had planned to do that on April, on Monday, April the 29th. And I actually handed out a schedule at a recent meeting a couple of weeks ago with the association and had it marked for the 22nd, but it's not going to be the 22nd, it's going to be the 29th. And David, I know your crew come to that one and, um, in we're working on the change. <laughs> Notice that, yeah. So yes. I don't think there'll be any confusion on that. I mean, it, it got out a little bit there that was going to do it on the twenty second, but then uh, there was a conflict because Oklahoma was doing their Poto meeting that uh, on the twenty second, so we moved ours to the 29th. And um, other than that, that pretty much runs down. We'll take up the whole month of April on the safety meetings, but. Uh, Looking forward to rolling those out. Yeah, I think um, I think the one that we sent out had the corrected date that we. Yeah, it did. Sent out there. Yeah, that. the one that come from the LP gas board was correct. The only one that got out with the with that uh, earlier uh, date on it was just handed out to just a few people. The people that was actually at our board meeting in Hot Springs week before last. So, well, and with that, um, Donnie, Steve. We, do you want to talk about the training going forward a little bit and what we talked about sure. down in Hot Springs? So um, week before last, the association had their board meeting and they invited me down and, and we talked about training going forward. And uh, as you all know, the, the requirements that we have in statute when it comes to training uh, are limited to two things, the 40 hour school for new employees into the industry and then the safety meeting that Donnie's talking about, and that's the only requirement we've got. 
Um, and so, you know, for years we've talked about how can we enhance our training? How can we do a better job with training? And we've thrown around the ideas of, you know, making it uh, more beefy and, and utilize some, um, some um, colleges and their facilities around the state, do it for a protracted period of time, introduce some CTEP. And so this was kind of some of the discussion that we had with the association. And before we can do that, we, we kind of need to get, uh, we need to kind of look at our rules and regulations to make it um, uh, line up with our surrounding states. Uh, and I think this will allow us to do um, a few things, but it will certainly make it easier to offer training around the state. And we've got um, a whole lot of plumbers that need training. We've got a whole lot of class three cylinder filling uh, um, people that need training that we have not required to attend these safety meetings just because of the, the sheer numbers. But our, our statute seems to imply that they should be there. Nobody has just ever enforced that. Um, and, and for the association to get involved and help with that training, uh, I think it would be conducive if we would uh, um, kind of follow some of the, of the similar rules and regulations that they've got in other states. Is that headed in the right direction? Yeah, Steve? that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, we, I just want to say on behalf of the board, we're grateful that you were there. I appreciate uh, it. We, we're looking forward if we can get together kind of a work meeting. This is probably an official board meeting kind of topic, but something we could just look and see what's possible. It was, I think, unanimous uh, decision of the board. We didn't actually vote, but I didn't hear anyone opposed to looking at training and trying to find out the opportunities. There's great concern, as you said, about the installer side. Those are the folks that can have the most impact on our businesses. And, and right now we're, we, we are not touching. We like to get out there and find a way to give them some information that helps keep uh, uh, everybody in Arkansas safe that uses propane. They, they're out there a lot stronger in numbers than, uh, than our propane marketers are. So, yeah, we're very grateful for your, your guidance on this, the leadership, and we're looking forward to having some well, sort of work meeting down the road. And to that end, when we were down there, the, the board, um, uh, offered a couple of individuals to start those discussions with, and uh, um, it was Ken DeWitt, and I think that a lot of y'all know Ken. He's been around forever. Um, and uh, um, and then, uh, who was the other one? Neil. Neil, Neil Pretty at Seba Gas. And then uh, I told those guys down there that I think it would be good for Terry, our chair, and then uh, um, I mentioned Paul Cash on behalf of the board, just because of the experience both as an independent and then as a as a regional being part of a regional player to just start the discussions because this is going to involve the adoption of some kind of uh, 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 58 in some form um and and that's you know when you get a, a big group and somebody's passionate about one thing and then somebody over here is passionate about one thing then it it can be forever right but if we start with a small group and we hammer these things out and then It'll ultimately be the board's decision whether to move forward or not. But we can hammer some of these things out on the on the front if you all are are in agreement and 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 willing. And I think that's kind of the idea, isn't it? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Um, and I guess does anybody have any questions about what what the thinking is here and or any any concerns? David, you guys have been in business over there for a long time. And well, it, it's interesting that that comes up because we've been talking about training for our own <clears throat> business here, and we've got some new people, and uh, I think it would be great, uh, and the good cross-section of the people that you mentioned, uh, we need to take <clears throat> some time to see what we think would be best for, for the state in general. Uh, but I, I know my daughter is, is here working now, and she, she's she been talking about this type of thing, that we need to have more access to training of employees and new employees, not only for us, but it would benefit, you know, all the companies in the state. Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, we're, we're seeing that the latest thing that's been a concern when it comes to training are, are these people that are selling and installing generators. A lot of times these are just electric companies, you know, it, it, it fits them, but then the generator has to run. So it needs fuel. And, you know, for years, 
there wouldn't be a whole lot of activity in the generator market. And so they would work with a local propane company to come set a tank and they would get together. And, and so years later now, generators have become, uh, you know, it used to be a luxury and, it, and it, it's not the case anymore. People are, 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 you know, their disposable income, they're spending it on generators and these things are just blowing up. And, and so if you're selling a generator and that's your business, that's how you feed your family. And, uh, and you go out here and, and the customer says, I want it, put it in tomorrow. And they say, oh, well, the propane company can't get out of here for three months. Well, that you can see how that could be frustrating to the generator people. And, uh, and so we've had one generator company that, that has come, uh, come in and they've gotten their class two permit. And uh, so they can go set a tank and they can run the line. Um, and uh, we, we, we need these people trained because they have done some horrendous things. Uh, and probably some of you all have seen some of the things that have been done. Uh, everything from you know, certain regulators right up against an air conditioning unit to not the proper materials being used. Um, these people need trained, but the, the plumbers, you know, we, we there's about 16,000 plumbers in the state of Arkansas. Uh, not all of them are master plumbers and that's required, but there's still a lot of them and they don't know anything about propane, you know, and that's a broad statement and that, you know, that's dangerous, but, but we've started the conversation um, with uh, the agency that, that permits the plumbers and we need to get together. One of the problem it's been as a consumer has propane and they call their supplier and the supplier says, you've got a leak, you need to get a hold of a plumber because we don't have servicemen, um, you know, employed like we used to in, in the numbers. And so they call a plumber. The plumber comes out and he does whatever he does. And he says, you're good to go. They call the propane company back and they say, you're still have a leak. And, and so now it becomes an issue with the consumer and the consumer calls the natural gas people and they say, well, we don't, we don't do anything with propane. You need to call the gas board. So the gas board calls here and then I tell them, we don't certify or permit any of these plumbers. There, there is no consequence. We don't have any way that, that we can do anything here and it's not fair to the consumer. And, and so, you know, we got to get with the, with the health department. We've got to find out some kind of training program and some kind of certification either on their side or on our side. Um, and, and, and get these people up to speed, know what they're doing and then, and then have a way to hold them accountable for the work they do. Um, and, and we can't as a board with, with six employees, you know, that that's difficult to do if we have an association and they are able to, um, uh, maintain a, a full-time trainer, there might be, it might be possible. So there's just a whole lot of reasons for us to look at where we are right now and what tomorrow might look like when it comes to rules and regulations and, and how we, we present and provide our training. Um, and, you know, Terry, Steve, you got something else you want to? Well, I just wonder when it would be appropriate to uh, renew. Once upon a time, a few years ago, or a year ago, I guess we were here and we asked for uh, appropriation. If we ever, if an asset ever came available like a trailer that we could modify and take around uh, trying to get some uh, some money from the of the gas board, so I think we'd renew that if and when the time is right to make that request. And I just want to preview for you too. I think the June meeting is when we'd also ask about uh, waiving the fees. You were kind enough to do that last year. I think that helped the industry. And in June we'll be making that uh, official request again. So two two asks of the board, and if maybe now is, I don't want to steal. Donnie's thunder, but Donnie uh, is going to be teaching the classes in April. He has stepped up and been our executive vice president of the association. Uh, great stability. Uh, he's a great guy, but he's told us he'd like to do a little more fishing. So we're uh, we're in the process of looking for our next executive vice president. Somebody would take this training opportunity and run with it. Hopefully, it's a full time. I mean, I don't. Know. It's going right. to depend. It'll depend what we can do here. But uh, just if you've got. Uh, any suggestions or folks that we should talk to? Uh, nobody can fill Donnie's shoes, but we were sadly we're going to have to try to do that here at some point. So, I'll be, I just want to express to the board and to everybody in the room our appreciation 
what Donnie Ray has done for us, and we're grateful uh, for the chance to work with him. Well, it's been a lot of fun. I've that, enjoyed it. You know, I've enjoyed working and uh, plan to be around until the end of the year. You know, unless we come up with somebody before then. That's I, fine. I heard you say the end of the year. They, so, but the end of the year. So, uh, the first time he mentioned it, Steve, he said until you get somebody hired. There we go. That's what I heard. Well, never mind. <laughs> um, but Donnie, uh, um, he's been in, working in this state and around forever. And uh, um, I've appreciated through the years of what you meant to the association and to your former employee, uh, employer. You know, um, you've been around a lot. And if you want to go fishing, I can understand that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I just, I just uh, feel the need to focus on some other things, you know, so. You have family, right? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Um, so I guess if anybody uh, has anybody in mind, Steve, get a hold of you. And, and they, they've got some names that they're floating around, but, uh, um, and then he brought up the trailer. And so I don't know if you all remember, it was a, a, about a year and a half, I don't know, a while back, the, we had an opportunity with a trailer. And uh, and we thought that we that it was a good opportunity, and then it turned into be a not an opportunity at all. Well, that, that same trailer opportunity has reappeared, and, uh, and it looks better. I'm not going to say it's a done deal. Because we still have to find some stuff, right, Larry? It's, it's over seventy-five percent. Seventy-five percent. I'm maybe, comfortable with that. Maybe even ninety. Okay. <laughs> but uh, Donnie, Donnie Ray went over and looked at the trailer this morning, and uh, they need to make. And, and you're thinking that this will be a yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a little bit about the trailer. It was used by uh, Pulaski Technical College to teach to do training on efficiency training. There's there's three gas furnaces in there. Uh, one of them is, uh, at least one of them is hooked to a condensing unit that's on the front of the trailer. Uh, so there's three gas furnaces. There's also a wall furnace, an old style wall furnace. And one of those furnaces is, of course, an older model. And then uh, one of them is a little higher efficiency. And then one of them is high efficiency. There's also a gas dryer in there, a gas water heater, a gas range. There's three televisions hooked up in there and it's set up really, uh, I mean, it's be great for, for our application. On the front of it, there's a couple of hundred pound cylinders already mounted and there's, a, there's also a generator uh, on there. So a lot of equipment on this trailer and it, like I said, it was designed and set up to use as a, uh, for training for efficiency on gas burning equipment. And um, so, wouldn't take a whole lot for us to to get it, um, you know, set up for our use. It's big, you know, it's 11 foot tall, 24 foot long, and uh, it is bumper pull, but it'd take a pretty good rig to pull it. I don't think you'd want to pull it with a half ton. No. Sure. It, it, looked, it was a one ton pull. That's what it looked like to us. We were talking about that, that it might even need to be a one ton. Yeah. Uh, but it's a big trailer and, you know, need to be wrapped and, and Steve, you know, he, he uh, um, asked for uh, uh, 50 grand in, in association with the trailer. Um, and then the trailer wasn't available. And then our appropriation came. And, and, and so, Larry, if a request was made from the association for us to help with this out of the fund, um, when would be the next time that that money could be available? It'd come up in the biennium next January. So we could address it in the biennium. And we'll do the budgets this summer. Okay, I thought it was going to be in the next appropriation cycle, but okay. So what's the, the next biennium? <laughs> yeah, July first. Don't blow up. Here we go. Yeah. Wow. It starts July next July first. Right. So, so between would, now and then, it'd be up in the January session. We have to submit the budgets this fall. Okay. So we put it in the draft budget that we send to the governor's office in the summer. Okay. Okay. And you would call it something like, you know, training or something. Put a line item in your budget for training. You would put a line item in a trailer or something. Or right. 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 Hide it with you know, education or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, well, that might be better than what I was thinking. I, I thought it would have to wait till our um, every two year. Um, so, Mr. Chair, uh, I think there's a, a few things that it would be good. If you would have in a form of a motion, um, one would be uh, to work with the association to pursue uh, common ground 
on regulation. And I might say, if you want to change your statute to allow more rules to address that issue, it, it's more of a statutory change. You want to get that done, you want to get draft of what you want to change quickly because we'll have to submit those to the governor's office for approval to this summer and decide then whether it would be a department initiative or the industry we just run. Right. And 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 that's and we, the only decision we would make is which 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 group would, would sponsor it. Okay, so once we get this hammered out, then we could we could come to the secretary and yeah. say, and then he might say, let's run this, or he might say, why don't you ask the association to run it? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, and we talked about that, I think it was. And, um, and then uh, I'm, I'm guessing, Steve, that you would like to uh, uh, re request a, a 50 grand. Uh, I like that line item uh, approach for training. Yes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be a second separate motion. Uh, the request from the association for uh, fifty thousand for training. So you can put that line item would stay in your budget year in and year out, whether you used it or not. It would just you know be there. Be there. Yeah. Now let me tell you the, the the third motion. So the because because of the the situation with the trailer, the trailer. Is it actually owned by a federal DOE or is that now owned by? It's, it's, uh, it turned loose from DOE because it's under, under 5K. Under the 5K. All right. So this, this belongs then to uh, Mitchell's group. All right. So they, then title transfer. It'll be a title transfer, but it would become property of the board. We don't have a vehicle to sell that to the association um, because it was once started at the federal level. Yeah. But they can transfer it to us and and I would assume then that we would um, we would turn around then and have some kind of a contract with the association say shares to use and definitely do what you want with it um, you know we would house it here I guess we would need to insure it um, and then the title would remain in the board and that would be the working of the treasurer so with that in mind then, then you know a third a third motion to to pursue the procurement of the trailer in question. And the title will be in your name. I mean, I mean the board's the name. Board's name. First, the first one is to, to make a motion for uh, the board to enter into talks with the association concerning current regulation and future regulation. I don't know that you need, you need a motion for that. Uh, I, I would, I would well, like one just to give some direct directive. We've got some board members that are not here and this is just make it clear. We did talk about this and everybody agreed that we're going to. Director, do you want that to be regulation or rule or statutory change? I think you need statutory change. It, it, it would be both because we can't change our rules. If we could, we could just adopt 58, right? And that would just be a rule and it'd just be promulgated. Right. But it wouldn't help the training aspect because that is in statute. So it's going to be required a, a bill yeah, to. You can certainly do a motion with both, but I think in order to do any kind of a rule change, getting to the point that you want to get to, you need a statutory change or, or, or part of it at least. Okay. And you can start working on rules while that's going through. Exactly. That, that's what we would in house review and have them all set to go that we want the statute passed. Right, right. Drop. Because in order for this board to make a change, it has to be presented to the board. The board needs to understand it and agree and through a motion approve the change. Then it has to go to Larry, then it has to go to the secretary. For rules, yes. For rules, then it has to go to the governor. Then it had, and then that's part of the promulgation. And and um and it goes over public notice and rules committee. Right. That's just for the rules. Right. A statute requires a bill. Right. And and so it's gonna be it's gonna be a combination of both. Um so maybe the proper wording would be entertain a uh entertain a motion 
uh, for the board to, uh, in concert with the uh, association, um, formulate rules. Well, draft legislation. Draft legislation. And then draft rules, secondly. <laughs> yeah, okay. Draft legislation and draft rules. Right. At least take independent courses. Rules you just work on internally until the statute passes. And the statute will take its own course for decisions of who's going to carry it. And if the, the, the state kicks it back to the association, then the association will go out and find sponsors and right. do the whole thing. Okay, so <laughs> did everybody hear that? Do we need to put that in a formal mo Charlie, do we need that in a formal motion? Or if they heard the gist of it, can they just say, I motion? I think if they've heard it clearly and concisely, somebody can make a motion to adopt what was just discussed. <laughs> All right. Brooke or David? Kevin. Or David? Brooke. Kevin, I, I move that we adopt um, a motion that covers the discussion that we've just uh, just heard. Very good. That's Thank good. You. I'll second it. All right. All right. All, right. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> uh, you ready for the second one? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have a lot of time traffic to get the trailer over here. Really? Okay. That's as far as it goes. Does, does, the one, does the one ton truck get to stay here? No, the one ton truck. The one ton truck is the office of water. But it's what hauled that trailer originally. Oh, really? And it's over there now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so oh, we can get the trailer it. over here. But then the truck goes home, and so you figure it out all right. It's not a package deal. I figured one went with the other. <laughs> so you read for number two, or we go? Yeah, the request from the first from the association for fifty thousand to claim that right. Yes, to uh, you need need a motion to uh, um, to supply the. To meet the request of fifty thousand dollars for training for the association. No. Kevin, um, I move that we meet the request of fifty thousand dollars for the association um, to supplement the training. Second. Motion second. <clears throat> One mind with blank. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. No, 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 no. You're getting broke in. Yeah. And then the, the the third the third motion would be um, for us to uh, uh, accept the trailer asset um, from E and E, um, just so the board understands that we're gonna we're gonna take this trailer. It's gonna become ours, and then. You know, we'll have to insure it. And so there's some costs there. So I move that we accept the 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 trailer from <clears throat> that department, uh, that we provide the insurance and that we use it for training. Good. Second. Well, motion second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries the next. Okay. All right, Steve, have you got anything else? Is there any other money you're looking for? Yeah. <laughs> Number two for two, I should keep going. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your uh, your uh, assistance on this uh, a lot. Thank you very much. Hey, Donnie, and, and appreciate all that you've done, and uh, look forward to the safety meeting. Yeah, we'll see you at the safety meeting. You bet. Thank you. Thank you all. We will turn it over to the director for his comments. Okay. The, uh, um, if you all have the financial 
report in front of you. And I wanna uh, point out something here. Um, I'll just remind you that our appropriation for, for this fiscal year was 625,000. That included 80,000 in, in capital expenditure, and that was to replace the heating and cooling units. And, and uh, we went ahead and replaced three of those. Uh, Chrissy was around 50 grand. And then we'll come back after the start of the next fiscal year and replace the other three. Um, that uh, so that that eighty thousand uh, comes out of that six hundred twenty-five, and then down below you can see um, uh, for FY twenty-four through February. These are the latest numbers we have. Uh, our expenses were four hundred nine thousand. Our revenue through February is four hundred twelve thousand. Twenty-seven thousand of that was the insurance check that we deposited this fiscal year. So actually, we're probably at 380, 390, something like that. Um, and you compare that 380, 390 to the same period down on the bottom, uh, the revenue of uh, FY23, which was 590,000. So you can see that we're a couple of hundred thousand dollars short. And that's that's where we wanna be because that's the money that we've returned to the industry. Um, and, and our fund, I, I was gonna have Chrissy look and see exactly what our fund balance was but we just went through the renewal process. And so a lot of that money, there wasn't a whole lot of difference in, in the fund right now. By the end of the fiscal year, that $200,000 will show up because we're not gonna be collecting a whole lot uh, March through June, but those expenses will be there. And, and so that's, that's where it'll show up. Um, the expenses last year through the same time frame was 328,000. Um, does, does anybody have any questions about uh, what we're doing with our finances and where the, where the agency is. All right. If not, then chair, I would make a motion or I would ask you to make a motion that they accept the financial report. Do we have a motion to accept the financial report? I so move. Second. No, second. No, second. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Anyway. That, that's the waiver went from year to year, right? Yes. And, and uh, you know, Steve, his intention at our June meeting is to ask for that, okay. that continuation. I don't know when the next meeting was. Okay. Yeah, it'll be in June before, just before the end of the fiscal year. So that'll be the proper time for the board to, yeah. we'll know better where we are financially so they can make a determination. Okay. And, and I think we're gonna be fine. I mean, I think we could probably be fine for three, four years mm -hmm. even. Um, but but there's also, um, you know, there's also some consideration that that I think the board needs to to look at, even though, we are good, and, and I, I think it is a great thing that we're returning the money to the industry. Still, the lion's share of this money is going out of state. And it's just the nature of the beast. Most of the transporters are out of state, so they're going to be have be the largest beneficiaries of it. And um, so, you know, there, there might be something that we can do that would be more beneficial to the dealers in the state than, uh, but but that's the way the statute's written now. And so that's what we're able to do. Um, but we might, you know, we might look at this and think about it and see if there is something different that the association would like to see us do, you know? Um, there might be a, a way to get, you know, more money back into their hands to be used for, for the good of the industry than, than just that. But, um, you know, I'm, you hear this in Washington all the time. We know better how to spend your money than you do. And I don't want to go there. This is what they, they wanted, and I agree. It was a good thing to do. And uh, Mr. Chair, really, we have talked about the trailer. We've talked about that other stuff. Mm -hmm. And and so, uh, um, Chrissy, do you know of anything that we're missing here? Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm coming it out. Um, Sir, do you want to get into the issue at all about potential enforcement? Or is that something? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, Charlie, I don't, I don't think at this time. And okay. what Charlie's referring to, we had, uh, um, we had some late payees for their permits this year. And uh, 
Uh, two of them involved multi-state marketers. Um, and, and, and it got to the point where we, we had conversations with them and, and Charlie helped with forming some language to use in those conversations. Ultimately, they, they did pay. Um, and, and Charlie, I think that I've, uh, and it involved also invoices that, that were, some were over two years old. And the, net, and the state has always been net 30. And so there was a, a, a concern that we've got some people, they might have paid for their renewal, but then they, they might've had $5,000 in unpaid invoices that goes back, you know, two years. And, uh, and so Charlie looked at the, the, the statute, the way it was written. And then we also had the AG's office chime in. Both came to the conclusion that we can withhold a permit based on unpaid invoices. And so we were going down that, down this road, one of them, ponied up and, 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 and just sent it a check for it all. The other one, it was kind of um, the mail's fault. They, these people kept saying, we have paid these, we have paid these. And we were like, okay, not to us, you have it. And then we found out that those checks ended up in um, over at, treasure at the treasure hunt. Yeah. And, and so Chrissy has been working with, uh, um, with them, with the, the multi-state marketer and, has uh, uh, secured what a thousand bucks or something about a thousand dollars that would have paid for probably twenty invoices, you know, twenty five dollars in a pop. Um, and and so, Charlie, I, I think that right now we're, we're good. Entirely up to the director, the chair, and the and the board what your what your desire is. Um, and and what he's referring to there is that. Um, <laughs> You know, whenever you whenever you take somebody's permit, that that is a big big deal, right? And and, uh, um, and that's not that's not something that I would never do on my. That would be you guys' decision. Um, but uh, um, we were we were contemplating discussing with the board some kind of uh, um, fine or, or something that that would maybe. Uh, um, being an attention getter, a, a, an attention getter, you know that that hey, these do need pay. Like I said, the one company they actually did pay. I think that that they paid most of theirs, and then that money went over there. The other one they just didn't pay, and and that was the one that that we needed to get their attention. They finally in uh, in late February they finally cut a check. You know, it's two months after, so basically they were running two months without a permit. Um, but they they did pony up and then something else that's happened with them. They have they have put in place a regional manager in the state that that we have a very good relationship with and that has assured us that this will not happen again. Um, it won't happen again until he gets fed up and leaves and <laughs> you know and then there's somebody else that we're dealing with. But uh, um, so that's kind of a, a, a roundabout way of discussing what Charlie was talking about. And, you know, my feeling is at this point that that there's no need, there's nothing that we need from the um, board at this time. But, you know, possibly in the future, uh, it, we might come in, uh, to a situation where I come to you all and say, what do you all feel comfortable with doing? You know, the, these people are not following um the rules like everybody else is what do we do with them and it's something for y'all to be thinking about for a future meeting that might might come up and present itself um, yeah, if you're going to open up the statute to do this training right maybe a good time to clarify that you can suspend or revoke permits and give authority to the board to assess a civil penalty yeah and I, lots of language like that in, in the scope and I, I think at some point, Charlie, we'll, we're going to need you to probably set in on some of the discussions um, because there are other places, and you've read our statute, that are kind of a, 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 ambiguous. Yeah, yeah, they're a little bit, little, there's a little ambiguity in, in terms of the statutory language. However, I think if they haven't, if they haven't remitted their payments or renewed their permits in a timely fashion like everybody else, it's it's a little bit sketchy in terms of the, and it's drastic. 
it's, it's extreme to, to revoke somebody's permit for something like that because not only you're jeopardizing the permit holder, but everybody that's employed by that. Right. I think I'm more comfortable with the idea of if the board would be amenable to it, drafting up an order and notice of hearing and saying, you have, you, have, you know, and it's the same, and it's the same permit holders over and over again. It is. That they keep dragging their feet. Um, but drafting something saying, you know, we looking at the, looking at the, the authority that the board has, we can certainly find them for not for not paying on time. That's not that's not an issue. That's not a problem. The 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 suspension of the revocation would be more extreme. I, I would I would only do that as a or even recommend that as a last resort. But certainly a civil penalty. That would be the attention getter. I think that might suffice to get them to remit a little bit quicker yeah. as opposed to having the director hound them <laughs> over periods of, of weeks and months to, to pay their fees. Yeah. And part of that is is the nature of the beast. You know, I've had a relationship with these people for years. Right. And so we're good. But then they can't get anything done because they don't have the checkbook. It's yeah, not, and so it's that's not the, yeah, it's not the in-state people that you have the relationship with. It's the corporate overlords that are the ones that are right. You know, right, right, right. responding. <laughs> yeah, I'm just used to that. It's not quite addressed to right. me well, I guess. But we have three levels: we suspend permits, we revoke permits, and we also cut off your your revenue stream. We can suspend you for sale of oil, so you cannot sell your product. That gets attention real fast. Yeah, that, that would. We just did that this week. We just called up the purchasers and refineries and issue them a cessation, and they, they no longer did, can legally buy your oil. Really? Okay. Um, you know, so hopefully we'll, we'll see uh, um, going forward. I, I think there's a good chance that this, this entity, one of the two, um, will not even come to time for renewal. Probably somebody else will own it. Uh, I, I think, um, but uh, um, but I'm Charlie. Thank you for reminding me that we talked about that, and I, I had intended to just to start the discussion, and I had failed to do that. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> Any other items for the board? Not not for me. We have a mo motion to adjourn. Move we adjourn. Second. A motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meetings adjourned. <laughs> Appreciate you Thank guys. You. Thanks, Damon, David. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Damon.